what I have here in front of me is the application that we just looked at. But what we're going to do here, when I run the application this time, I want to perform OS aware debugging. I want to be able to see what my tasks are actually doing. How much stack space are they using? So in order to do this, I've already set up the debug environment, so I'm ready to hit run at any time here. But I want to go through and navigate to the view that will let me see my threads. So what I'm going to do is come up into the file menu. I'm going to say view. I'm going to go down to more debug windows, and I'm going to select threads. Now, what happens here is on the right-hand side of the screen, I end up with this threads tab here now. And you can see, just like on the slide we just looked at, I can see a priority, an ID, name, status, timeout, etc. But there's no information there yet. And the reason for that is that I have to actually run my application to see what's going on. So I'm going to go through and hit the run button. We can see here I get a status change. We're running. And what I can do then is pause my code. And now I can see here what's going on. I can see my tasks list. I can see where they exist in memory or the ID that's provided them. I can see the actual name, which is why it's a good idea to provide your tasks with a descriptive name when you create them. I can see their current state. Is that actually running? Is it delayed for some reason? Maybe one is waiting on a semaphore or it's just waiting for time to expire. We can see the timeout associated with it. And I think one of the most critical and useful applications for this is going to be, we can see the stack info. One of the things that I could do or that I see happen a lot in industry is people just guess at the stack space that they need. They have a simple task that's going to blink an LED and they say, oh, I'm going to give it 512 bytes or a kilobyte worth of stack space. When in fact, they probably only need, you know, 64 or 128 bytes of memory for their stack space, especially if they're just blinking an LED. But one of the great things about this is that I could run my code and I could run it through all of its test cases and really try to figure out, you know, really put it through its paces. And then I can pause and I can see how much stack space that I actually use. And we can see here that our LED gatekeeper task is using about 180, 180 bytes worth of stack space. The LED controller task is using 188 out of 512. So in this particular instance, I'm probably wasting a bunch of memory and oversizing the stack for these tasks. So what I could then do is I could then stop the application from running. And then what I want to do is come in here and adjust the size of these. So maybe I could get away with something much smaller. Maybe I could get away with just setting these at 32. Set them at 32, do a save. I can rebuild my solution run the application and now once again I can go ahead and run and this time I end up in the I ended up in a hard fault handler and the reason for this you can come over here and see ah the stack sizes got out of control so that means that my choice of 32 was obviously not enough but I know by how much here so I could go over that again stop adjust my code again set it this time to maybe 64. Now I'm going to go back and rebuild, run, and now when I go ahead and click run, my application's still running, but do I have enough stack space left? So I can go ahead and click pause, and I can see that I probably have just the right amount here. I'm using 256, a uh, maximum of 256. I got 180 bytes or 188 bytes, so I could maybe tone it down a little bit more, but just in case something really strange happened, I do want to leave a little bit of extra buffer space there. And that's one of the cool things about being able to do OS aware debugging. I can actually see what's going on with my tasks, see the stack info, see what the timeouts are, and a lot of other pieces of information that's useful for us when we're debugging our system.